So as you can see, we have only the aorta right here, as well as a couple iliac arteries. But obviously, we're missing a bunch of the, we're missing the rest of the cardiovascular system, right? We're missing all the other arteries and veins and things like that. And so how do we actually go about simulating the, our, our model here if we're missing everything? So that's the purpose of the boundary conditions, which we'll click on over here in this tab, uh, the so-called inland outlet BCs. So your boundary conditions tell you effectively how your computer model of the arteries connect to the rest of the cardiovascular system and how the rest of the cardiovascular system affects the flow and pressure results that you would see in your current model over here. And so when we look at this tab, Inland Outlet BCs, we'll see that there are uh, these three headings over here and each one corresponds to a different cap. So if we click on this one, for example, we'll see that this section of the cap is now highlighted and that, that tells you that this cap this um, line corresponds to this cap. And similarly over here, we have the results for this cap over here, and then over here we'll have it at the other cap. So when we prescribe boundary conditions, we want to prescribe it at the, the caps of our model because this is where our model effectively attaches to the rest of the cardiovascular system. So you can imagine uh, down here, for example, um, your arteries don't just end here, right? They'll continue on to the rest of your legs, Etc. So then there's a bunch more, there's a lot more vessels down here that we just didn't model. And the purpose of that is because, you know, we don't have enough, because running a model that big would require too much uh, computational resources and that would be a very expensive simulation. So usually what we do is we chop off our model to some feasible domain over here, the main domain of interest, and then at all the other caps where the rest of the cardiovascular system uh, attaches to our model, we prescribe boundary conditions. So over here at the inlet of the aorta, so this is where the heart is attached to your, your aorta, right? So when the heart contracts, it pumps blood through the aorta, which then distributes the blood to the rest of your systemic circulation, right? So over here, a very feasible and a commonly used boundary condition is an inflow boundary condition, which effectively describes the amount of blood that your heart pumps into your aorta, right? So for this cap, we'll use uh, such a boundary condition. So We'll go ahead and double click on cap aorta smooth over here, and then we'll get this window that, that says set inlet and outlet BCs. So when we click on this button over here on, for BC types, we'll see that there are four listed boundary conditions that we can use. So for this one, because we want to prescribe a certain amount of blood going through our aorta, right, we'll be using this one called prescribed, prescribed velocities. And then there's um, a section over here that tells you about the shape of that inflow waveform. So there are three different shapes that are provided in vascular, which is parabolic, plug, and Wormersley. And uh, generally, the, the, the shape that you would use depends on kind of the location of your geometry. So um, for this one, we'll be using a parabolic case. But depending on you know, where you are in the cardiovascular system, it might make sense to use some of the other ones. So as you can tell from the name, a parabolic shape means your, your blood flow enters your aorta with a parabolic shape, like uh, one that looks uh, like some kind of quadratic term. Um, if you use a plug shape, then that effectively looks like um, some really sharp gradients on the sides where your walls are, and then uh, like a, a, effectively a, a kind of straight and viscid core in the center. And then there's also the Wormersley shape, which is used for um, highly oscillatory flows. So for this, we're just gonna to stick to the parabolic case for our model. And then now that we decided to use our, um, this inflow waveform, we have to know like how much blood to prescribe into the, the aorta, right? So that is where we use this button over here for flow rate from file. This is where we prescribe the amount of blood that goes into our uh, aorta. And then this will be as a function of time. So over here, we'll click on this and um, you'll have some kind of text file that already has all this information. So I'll go ahead and show you what that text file looks like as well. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it and open it. And then just to give you a quick idea of what that flow file looks like. So in the file, we have these four numbers over here. Um, the numbers on the left column are the times and then the numbers on the right column are the flow rate. So effectively, at each time, we have some amount of flow rate and that effectively describes the amount of blood volume that is being pumped by our blood 
uh, into the aorta uh, per time. And the time kind of depends on what kind of un units you're using for your simulation. If it's like minutes or seconds, but usually you use seconds. So over here, we have some volume per second effectively at this time. And then notice over here that this is the time for our, um, our inflow, right? And we see that it goes from zero to one. So this time is always prescribed over just one cardiac cycle. And as such, um, because the total length of this time is one, then the length of our cardiac cycle is one. So the period over here is one. So this period of over here effectively comes from the difference between the start and end times for your files. So we could have more uh, values over here if you wanted, something like this, for example. So we're now prescribing um, you know, the inflow over a bunch of different times. And then see over here that all these numbers, these 65s, they're all the same. And the reason we, for that is because for this case, remember we called the simulation steady. That is the, um, we're, that means we're prescribing a steady inflow. So that means our inflow is not varying per time. And as such, this number is constant over here. However, the numbers on the right-hand side, we can change it per time so that they could be something different. For example, we can make this 50 and something like 40, for example. And then this would represent like a pulsatile inflow um, where you still have a period one over here, but now your flow rate is changing per time. And then usually you get this kind of information from uh, clinical data. So, um, so if you have that clinical data and you have those flow measurements, then this is usually where we get uh, our values over here. So of course the inlet boundary conditions and the outlet boundary conditions that we use, we want them to be as physiologically relevant as possible. And as such, uh, this data usually comes from some kind of clinical measurement. Um, maybe something that uh, doctors made with a catheter that they put into the blood vessel, for example. Um, and then the last thing to note is that notice that all these values have negatives. So that's kind of weird, right? That, that means negative blood is flowing into our aorta. So the reason for the negative is because over here, we have blood flowing into the aorta, right? So the blood is going into the aorta. However, at this cap, this cap has an outward facing normal vector. So that means we have a normal vector going outwards over here. And so in order to make the blood go into the blood vessel for our simulation, we have to use this negative sign over here. Um, yeah, and so that it kind of gives you an idea of what the inflow text waveform looks like. And that is what you would prescribe again over here for a inflow boundary condition called prescribed velocities. And again, it can be steady or pulsatile, and you can vary the times and values. And usually these come from some kind of clinical measurement. So now we're effectively, um, the last thing we'll set, we'll change the number of Fourier modes to just one because we're considering a steady flow. Um, and so what the Fourier modes represent is if you had a pulsatile waveform with a lot of noise, what you can do is you can decompose that into its Fourier modes and then take the number of modes that you want for your solution. And kind of the higher the number of Fourier modes you prescribe, then the more of the, the higher frequencies that you'd be capturing and more of the, the noise that you might be capturing as well. But because we're using a steady inflow right here, we effectively have only just one Fourier mode. So we'll be using just one here. If you decide to use 10, that's also okay because again, we still have just a, like a, a steady inflow. So we'll click okay over here. And then now we need to prescribe the boundary conditions for the outlets of our model, right? And so for this, we'll be using um, the so-called resistance boundary condition. So what the resistance boundary condition represents is it effect effectively rep represents um, the impedance to your flow from caused by the, the downstream vasculature. So again, you can imagine that your blood vessels don't just stop here. There's a bunch more blood vessels down here from the rest of your cardiovascular system. So in order for blood to flow into those other vessels, we have to kind of represent those other vessels somehow, right? And so we represent them using a resistance boundary condition. And that effectively represents like, again, how much uh, those blood vessels impinge on your flow. And so usually the value of that, of those, of resistance for the rest of those blood vessels can be determined from some kind of clinical measurement. Um, like you can go into literature and try to find values or so a lot of times we'll also prescribe the resistance value based on the flow distribution that we want. So as you can imagine, when the heart pumps blood into the aorta, it goes down here and then it splits off in the into the two iliac arteries, right? But how much blood goes into each artery? So then 
if you have an idea of how much blood goes into each artery, which you could, again, might be able to estimate from clinical measurements or from literature data, then you can prescribe your resistance boundary condition correspondingly to try to capture that, uh, that flow split distribution. But for this case, um, you can imagine that it's likely that the resistance between these two arteries is fairly symmetric since the cardiovascular system is fairly symmetric between your two legs. So we'll use the same uh, resistance value down here. So for now, we'll just use something like a value of 5,000. And then it didn't, and then there's also this button called distal pressure. And so what the distal rep pressure represents is it, ref it, ref it represents the pressure very downstream of your cardiovascular system. So effectively where your capillaries are. So then if you know the pressure down there, then you can prescribe that as a value here, and that would effectively be a reference pressure for your uh, 3D simulation here. However, usually we usually set the distal pressure to a value of zero to represent the capillaries, and so we'll do that here. And then same thing for the other cap, because we're using a symmetric boundary condition, we we'll pick resistance over here and then put 5,000. And so that effectively gives you an idea of how we prescribe the inlet and outlet boundary conditions for our cardiovascular system. And again, these boundary conditions represent how our current model over here is connected to and informed by the rest of the cardiovascular system.